Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, my name's Marcus. I'm the lead pastor here at Crossroads. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, I'm glad you guys came out this morning. Beautiful day. A couple quick announcements. One, we have a fish fry uh, out here with the Band of Brothers. They're doing out there. It's 12 bucks. Make sure and just buy them out, okay? They're doing really good, but it's a beautiful day to go hang out and stuff like that. So immediately after the service, which, by the way, whenever you're leaving, you guys are just like a bunch of sheep just going out one gate. Just remember, if you have children, you can go out this way, and you can go out out that way, obviously, but you can also go out that way, all right? That way, if you don't have any kids, just boom, there it is right there. (laughs) Just go straight down there and grab your fish. Be fantastic. Man, my heart is a little heavy today, but I want to pray together. Is that okay? So I just got a call. My sister is probably passing away either today or tomorrow or Anytime, so I, I, just a real, you know, hard moment. But we're family. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray. You are good to us, and we are so thankful, Father God, for your healing power working mightily right now in that room. Thank you for my brother, my dad, the family, Lord God. I just speak your blessings upon them and your favor, and you would rest. Give them rest in that moment. So we just trust you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate that. Dang, what a way to start a message, right? (laughs) Today we're looking at the number one reason why marriages get divorced. Like, dang it. What a worse message now. (laughs) You're looking at why 5% of the couples avoid avoid this topic. And because of that, they lack a shared vision. They lack uh, a vision that takes them into you know, something bigger than themselves. Uh, We're looking at a topic that when you don't address it in your home, this topic will actually lead you to poor health, high blood pressure, and many times mental health, and for sure back pain. (laughs) And it's the one reason why a lack of trust is created in a home. And it's the one reason why Natalie stabbed me in the fork when I was 19 years old on my arm. I have to explain that before Jesus, she said. She made sure she said. <laughs> the topic is money, okay? We're looking at money. And we were, let me just, let me just clarify. Natalie's not a bad person, okay? Uh, when I was 19 years old, I took some of the money. We only had 40 bucks or so, you know, cash. And it was supposed to be used for groceries. So I take off with this friend of mine who's a crazy guy. We wind up in San Antonio. And he goes, man, I'm going to go get a tattoo. He goes, you're going to get one too? I'm like, no, I'm not. He goes, and I looked at it, I was like, you know what, I am. I only had 40 bucks, and I was like, man, this is $40 for food or a tattoo. So we were messed up. We got the tattoo. I still have it right here. I'm not going to show it to you because <laughs> it does have four holes in there. <laughs> so I came home. I came home, and I had wrapped it all up. And that is like, oh, I burned. I used to work at SMI. I was like, I burned myself. I hurt myself. And she saw some ink, and she looked at it and took it off, and she, I don't know why she did this, but she's a very nice, beautiful lady. But that moment, something got into her. She just got the fork, because it was supposed to be grocery money, all right? I used her grocery money to feed our kids, and it was not a good thing. What what I said was, so I guess we're going to eat this. I guess we're going to eat this, yeah, and she stabbed me. I'm like, that's the reason. So money is the topic, your Benjamins, cha-ching, your dough, your cheddar, whatever you want to call it. Um, Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever hidden a purchase from your spouse or from your parent? Hey, wait a minute, what? Uh, Maybe you're in college and parents are sending you money and stuff and you're like, I'm going to use it for something else. Or maybe you're a wife or a husband, you're at the grocery store and you know it costs 150 bucks. And you slide your card there, and the very thing before you put your deal on there and press enter, it says, do you want cash? You take that extra 20 or 40, pocket it, and all, they, all the husband sees is the receipt for 240. He don't know that 40 of it is you pocketed it. Anybody ever do that? Nobody even thought about that but me, right? <laughs> Probably. Anyways, today's elephant in the room, we're looking at elephant stuff that People need to address in the home, and a lot of times they don't. This is one topic that people do not address for whatever reason. They don't talk about money, and they think that life is going to get better, uh, you know, when they don't address it, and that's just not going to happen. 
All right? So uh, it's important for us to, we're giving you these topics because we think, one, they're important, but two, we've got to have a conversation. As a matter of fact, Pastor Joel's coming. He's in, I think he's in Lakewood right now with uh, Joel Osteen and them guys. And he's coming back and he's going to be talking about communication next week. So you don't want to miss that. But I heard about a school teacher who had um, teaching her class about the difference between right and wrong. And so she stands up before the class and he goes, hey, all right, children, I'm going to give you another example. If I were to get a man into a man's pocket and take all of his money, what would I be? And little Johnny raises up his hand and he says, you would be his wife. He's like, <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> I had to share that. All right. But here's where we're going to start. We're going to begin here in Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter. I think if you look at your app, it should be in your notes there, all these passages. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get to where I need to go, but I need to, I need to get to some part of it. Is that okay? <laughs> but Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter, this is something that I read years ago, and man, it just resonated with my heart because I never saw God being favorable and God's favor and his hand upon me in a favorable way. I always saw him like bam, bam, you know, with a club ready to beat me over for any little thing that I did wrong, any little thing I thought wrong. But here in the gospel, it says, it is of my father's good pleasure. Oh, where you at? That's a great question. In Luke 12, verse 32, it says, don't fear, you little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is my father, it pleases my father to give you, for you to be ruling, for you to have royalty, for you to consider yourself a, a person who can create your own world. My father desires to, he's not wanting to withhold anything from you. He wants to bless you. He wants to build you up. He wants to strengthen you. He wants you to become better so that you can become a blessing to others. He not only wants to bless you, he wants you to be a blessing to others. Does that make sense? And I am not the one who preaches on prosperity. I'm not the claim it and grab it and grab it and glab it or whatever you call that stuff. Uh, I'm not that guy. I was a part of all that when I first got saved. PTL, hey, if you give $5, I will give you this oil and I promise you will be debt free in a year. So we tried that. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> but I'm just saying that's not the angle I'm coming from. So a lot of times, as soon as you start talking about finances or money, People shut down. I need your heart to stay open today, okay? I need your heart to stay open because it's the only way you'll receive the truth, not that I'm the only one that's teaching it, but the truth concerning finances in your life. You've got to, how many guys, how many couples are, are in here? Just curious. You have a husband and wife here. Okay. Wow, just you, babe. How many of us are under 30 years old? Just curious. Well, what the heck? What's the rest of y'all? y'all? How many are 50 and over? Whoa. Y'all are the ones that are true. No, no, no. no I, don't, I don't need all that. Okay. I'm just curious who my crowd is. All right. So here, remember this, this truth right here. The, the greatest asset that you have in your life is not the funds that you have in your account. It's the favor that you have in your brain. That's your greatest asset. It's like, you know, how much wealth are you worth? How much are you worth? Well, I'm worth a lot. Why? Because blood was shed by the only begotten son because he loved me. He, that's the value that he placed upon me. And that value is no different. You are, you are just as valuable. And until you see yourself with that value, you'll never be able to receive all the fullness that God has for your life. You'll be stuck. Because then, here's the, here's the, here's the counter truth, or the, the, the thing that the enemy comes, your worth and your value to yourself is only based upon how much you do, your performance. And you will do and not do, and you will do good and then do bad. And you're, we're so flaky that if it was based upon how well we did over how many days and however many months, forget it, man. We all, we're, we're just not good. When he sees you and I, he does not see us based upon our performance. He sees us based upon what Jesus, how Jesus performed on that cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for that, his grace, right? And that's why he says, look, it's my father's good pleasure to give you. Amen. You can just stop right there. So it is of my father's good pleasure to give. Forget about you or me. 
My Father loves to give. For God so loved the world that he gave. He's a giver. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. That's who my Father is. I think they just sang that song. Goodness of God. Amen. I love you, Lord. He is so good to us. So the greatest asset, and if you don't have uh, an understanding of God's favor upon your life, you got to start right there. You have to understand how valuable you are in his eyes and how much favor he has upon you. It's like, remember the old children's fable, the, the goose that laid those golden eggs? Which was better? Which one, you know, was more... Um, you wanted you you wanted the golden eggs. People are just chasing after golden eggs. Give me the goose, man. <laughs> Give me the goose. Why? Because that's the one that produces the wealth. Well, Deuteronomy the eighth chapter says, "Remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you the power to get wealth." You don't understand. I work twenty four seven. I got. I have what I have because I worked. Who gave me the breath to even get to work? Amen. Who gave you the skill set and the mind to even get there Amen. to do what you're doing? God's given you that. Until you flip it, you'll never get into the place where God wants you to ultimately be in the area of your finances, in the area of being a blessing. And it's not even about you uh, getting riches. It's about you being a blessing and making things better for you and your kids and your city, your community, your business, or whatever it is that you're operating in. Amen? And so it's a different mindset. It's a mindset that we have to have. It says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. So this last week, just a few days ago, somebody said, Marcus, what in the world are you doing now? He's like, what do you mean? He goes, are you selling trailer houses now? Or what the heck's going on out there? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I didn't even think about that because last Sunday, you didn't see any of that stuff out there. Well, how in the world did that happen? Well, let me tell you. So I'm sitting here talking to one of my band of brothers, Casanova. And he's a good brother, but he just came to church not too long ago. He's an alcoholic, just was. just was. Yes, sorry. It's good. Thank you. I'm used to her corrections. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a, uh, I was like, dude, what do you do? He says, oh, man, I work in San Antonio for this company. I move modular homes, and we do all this kind of stuff. It's like, cool. I said, actually, I said, if you ever have one, if you ever, you know, have an extra one or whatever, let me know because I want to purchase one for, you know, the back over here. And he looks at me and goes, Pastor Marcus, he goes, we just liquidated six of them. At the end of the year, they're part of our deal. He goes, we're giving them away. And usually we give them to the, to the uh, drivers that tow them away because they already have the equipment. And so we usually give them first choice and they take them. And, so, and actually all six of them were taken, but there's only one left on the property because this one guy hasn't taken it goes, give me a minute. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm like, what in the heck? What's going on? I just asked a question, man. <laughs> so he called. He calls me back. He goes, hey, Pastor Marcus. He goes, I just called the guy who hadn't picked it up yet. It's my brother-in-law. And I told him, brother-in-law, that's no longer your trailer. I'm giving it to the church. <laughs> I'm like, what? He says, it's yours. He goes, we're going to start packing it up, getting it ready. He goes, it'll be over on your property in a couple of days. I'm like, what in the world is going on here with the favor of God? What happened is that's God's favor. That's why. He could have easily said, you know, it's already given away or whatever. Whatever was inside of him goes, you know what, I'm going to bless our city. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless our, our community, our church here. And I have, it's within the power of me to do that. And so I just made a phone call. But that's the beautiful favor of God. That's why these kind of things happen all the time. It's God's favor. And that's been happening in Nandi and I's life for years since we've given our life to the, to the Lord. He is constantly showing himself strong on our behalf. There's so many things that we don't deserve, but God's mercy is so beautiful and so wonderful that we are about my father's business. Yes. And because we're about his business, stuff just happens constantly. I hear you guys all the time. Many of, many of you have asked me, he goes, How does it, this just seems like another preacher story. I was like, I know. He goes, I'm not making this stuff up. He goes, it just happens over and over again. And I could go on and on, but it just, you know, there's too many stories to tell you. So but this morning what I want to do is I want to show you my journey in a, in a little simple way of how we've gotten to this place. Because I forget, it's so, we're so used to just walking like this. We don't know what today, who knows what today's going to happen. I mean, today here, all of a sudden I get 
you know, I get a hundred and something thousand dollar deal. A couple days later, my sister's going to pass. I mean, it's just crazy. We live in the same world, though, right? But the hand of God, the grace of God, the favor of God is still upon us regardless. It doesn't negate or eliminate some of the circumstances that we have to go through. We just go through it because we live in a fallen world. But even in the worst case scenario, man, God's grace is sufficient for you to help you get over anything that you face in life. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? And really, really honestly, and this is a really, really great perspective. I wasn't thinking about this, but who cares about 150,000 when you have people that you have that God's put you in charge of or wants to, you know, help? Yeah. Who cares? This stuff, this world stuff is nothing. We pay so much attention to it. We put it at a really, really high place in our lives. We leave children, we leave families, we desert people, we negate people to pursue this thing. And the most appreciable asset we have is our loved ones, obviously the Lord, and those he has placed us around. Isn't that crazy how we do that? We do it over and over again. So our journey, Natalie and I, weren't very rich. I don't know if you knew that or not. We didn't come up from, we're not trust fund babies or any of those things. Man, I grew up very, very poor. My dad, I didn't know I was poor, but I remember, man, playing those little cars, those little Hot Wheels, and Mom and I used to laugh because I didn't have, you know, we would get the Hot Wheels. We, could, we couldn't get the, the tracks, though. It was too much. That was extra. And so that was okay, though, because we just sat on one part of the living room and just rolled it, and it, just, it was so messed up, and we just, that was our track. <laughs> and every now and then, somebody would kick that track, and it was a rat that was running, <laughs> running around. <laughs> I mean, we just grew up, you know, it was just, we were poor, man. My dad was telling me the other day, I said, son, I said, you know, he had, uh, he had a few brothers and sisters, but they only had like two rooms, I think, in their house. And he remembered uh, always sleeping out. So he got kicked out, I mean, he's sleeping outside in a hammock. I told dad, I said, I don't ever remember taking a shower, dad. Not that I was dirty. I don't remember having a shower where I'd go inside and have a shower like we normally do. And he starts laughing, him and mom. He goes, I said, what are you laughing at? He goes, because never, we never had one growing up. He goes, all I remember was a tub outside with a water hose. I'm like, that's what I remember. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was not normal. And so we grew up like that. And Natalie came, you know, Natalie was high dollar. When she, I met her, she just wanted pork chops and eggs. <laughs> and mom told her, he goes, the only meat you're going to have is this, you know, carne guisada. That's what we're going to cut it all up and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Is that right, Dad? <laughs> but we still were poor, man. We were living on housing ap- apartments and, you know, manor apartments. We couldn't. We had cable TV, but the only reason we had cable is because I climbed up the pole with a wire and <laughs> twisted it, brought it down, and put it in my, you know, in my living room. Before Jesus, before Jesus again. <laughs> the knife and the fork before Jesus. All this stuff's before Jesus. But that, the, you think about doing that, and it's okay. The mindset's just messed up. You know, it's so far away from the things of God. So all of a sudden, we go from that place, we get born again, God's favor is upon us. We have no idea what is happening here. Our life is just totally transformed. People around us were like, one, my heart exploded in such a way that I was so full of joy. I was just smiling. I loved everybody, everybody. Our enemies, I loved them all. I loved her ex-boyfriends. I loved everybody. (laughs) Full of joy, full of life, full of strength and goodness and you know I would give you know when we had we had bags and bags of pot I mean like trash bags in our in our stuff and I got born again right before I could make the sale so man I had to I was like okay how am I what am I going to do with this stuff I got born again so guys would start coming in and I'd just be giving it to them like here man bless you I want to bless you here (laughs) but that happened a week ago or a day later, that would have never happened. Something happened when I got born again. Like some of you guys are like, "Man, I wish I'd have known you back then." It's like, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. And so um, we got born again, and stuff happened. Man, our heart was splo- exploding inside. I still had an old mindset, but God was renewing some things. I would read Him, read God's Word. And he, it was too much. It was like, he can't be that good, but I knew he was because he changed my life. But I needed to find out more. What's in this word? What does this Bible say about who God is? 
because I grew up in Catholicism. I had a little book that says, Jesus, make me worthy. So I had to do stuff to find worthiness in myself. It's always been like that. And I still have tendencies to do that. And my default thinking is that. So I have to constantly, you know, contra- you know go against that thinking. So I realized after six months that I had to go to a church. I needed a community because I was scared to go anywhere because Jesus had said in his Bible, it says Jesus is coming back. I'm like, baby, he's coming back. We can't go anywhere. We can't go to the movies. We can't go anywhere. We got to stay right here. He's coming. And so we held on to the word of God like that. And so I went to a church and I met this man named Andrew Freeborn. Pastor Andrew Freeborn, one of the most amazing scholars. I mean, if God would pick anyone in the world, it would have to be that man to teach me and disciple me and love on me. They told me to stay away from that church. It's a gospel lighthouse there on Tor Drive in 123. Don't go to that church. That man thinks he can go and walk on water. I'm like, man, I just read that. It's like, I want to go visit this guy. I want to go see who this guy is. That's why I went to that church because I had just literally just read that passage. Peter walking on the water. And so Andrew begins to disciple me and pour his life into my soul. And he begins to show me some scripture. And he says, hey, Marcus, have you ever heard about giving and the tithe? I'm like, no, what is that? He goes, well, giving is 10%. I'm like, well, what do you do with that? Why does God need my money? He doesn't need my money. He's, I mean, he's pretty doing okay, I think. <laughs> he goes, no, it's not about that. He goes, it's, so he would teach me the principles of, of God's word. It's all over scripture. And I'm like, okay. And so I told Natalie about it. I need to, I, anything that we do with our finances, we do it in agreement. It says, the scripture says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And so when we are in agreement, it's even more powerful. So we began to give our 10%. Now, in the beginning, it was wishy-washy. It says 10%, 10%. Every dollar, 10 cents. Every $100, $10. Just go on and on. We didn't have enough anyway. Let's just give it away. So we would be a blessing. Andrew taught me that. He says, Marcus, it's all over scripture. It says, prove me now, Malachi 3.10. I'll not open up unto you the windows of heaven. The only other time the windows of heaven is used is when the rain came down and the windows of heaven were open. It was so much water it flooded the earth. That's connected to you proving that God, if you, you trust God with your finances, he will pour out where it's overflowing in your life. <laughs> and so even, even with knowing that scripture, we would go back and forth. The tree of the life, uh, of, uh, you know, in Genesis, that's the first tree. You couldn't touch it. You couldn't mess with that. Why? Because that's the Lord. That's the tithe. That's, the, that's his. That's God's. Honor him with your first fruits is what the principle was. When they came out of Egypt and they went into the promised land, what's the first place of war that they had? It was Jericho. Remember that? Jericho is the first enemy that they face. And God told them, Joshua said, he goes, hey, the the spoil and all the goods, all all the stuff, don't mess with it. It's the Lord. It's mine. Why? Because it's the first thing that they had to come. It's the tithe. Jericho is the tithe. On and on and on. We saw the scripture. We saw the principle. So even though we saw it, we began to give, and it was still hard sometimes because we weren't used to living that way. We finally broke through. And so we began to give, you know, 10% over and over again. And then it felt like after a while, honestly, it felt like it wasn't life-giving anymore. I don't know how to describe that other than it didn't feel like whenever I would do it, I was using my faith. I was implementing faith. At first, it was like, man, this is big faith here. And I would honor God with it. Psalms 37, 25 was our favorite passage. It says, I've been young, now I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. I remember when I got a revelation, I was like, oh, my God. I'll never be forsaken. I'm his righteousness. Why would I be the first one forsaken? He's not prejudiced. He's not doing it to a Mexican. Why would he do that? I called my pastor. Pastor, freeborn. Look what I found. Of course, he was laughing. He was belly laughing. He was laughing at how I got that revelation. I said, Pastor, I need $400. He goes, but man, God said he won't forsake me. And he's laughing. He goes, Marcus, you've got to come to Sunday service. You've got to share that story. I was like, okay. So I came up. I'm sitting over there in that middle area right there. I came up, and I started telling the congregation, 
this is what God's word says. <laughs> and he goes, and I'll never be forsaken. I didn't tell him about the 400. I didn't tell him about anything. I just knew that God would not forsake me, and he's not going to forsake you either. Amen. By the time I walked back down to that area, I opened up my Bible, and in that Bible was $300. I'm like, what the heck happened here? But I needed 400. I said, God, you shorted me 100. <laughs> said, you shorted me 100. So I'm like, what's going on here? So I'm, I'm rejoicing. I don't know where that 100 came for, from. We had no clue. I go home, and Natty and I were living at the Manor Apartments, and uh, we have our own key for our own mailbox. Nobody has that key. I said, hey, babe, before I go in, I'm going to go check the mailbox. I go in there, open up the mailbox. I take it out. There's a piece of paper in there, just like a piece of notebook paper. It's folded. It's a trifold. I open it up. Passage of Scripture, Psalms 37. I've been old, and I've been young, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. And five $20 bills. The hundred was there. I'm like, sweet. That's awesome. I was going crazy. I'm like, what the heck? What's going on here? So little things like that, God would show me over and over. I wasn't doing it to get money. I'm just doing it because I want to honor God with my first fruits. But it felt after a while like there's no faith in that. That I was just, it was almost like a, like a bill. Like, this is just a bill. This is a tie, 10%. It's just another bill. Get my electric bill, do my groceries, here's a tithe. And in the New Testament, we, the way we operate and live, we need to operate by faith. Everything should be done by faith. We come to service, we walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. We honor God, Natalie and I. We don't receive offerings here during the service. We receive offerings. But one of the things we first did is like many times we would give, we would, we would hold our hands together, we would trust God, we'd say a prayer, and we would release our faith when we put that in our, in our box. It was so beautiful. But that stopped happening for a little while because it didn't feel right. And so he started schooling me on some things. Let me just give you some of the scriptures. Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. It says, hey, cast your bread upon the waters. You'll find it after many days. And if you don't find it, it's okay. Just keep casting. And so it's a metaphor for being generous. Even, even if the return seems unlikely, that's not the purpose. You're not doing it to get something. You're doing it to honor Jesus, doing it to honor God. You're doing it because you're so grateful that he's changed your life so much that, man, his, I, covetous greed had gripped us. This world um, um, puts stuff inside of us that make us think that, hey, life is about us. When you take a picture and you look at it, what's the first thing you see? You're looking for you. How do I look? Dang, I got a booger there or whatever it is. I don't know what it is. But you look for you while we're selfish. And he wants to strip that thing from our lives. One of the ways, and I believe the best way, and the, 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 one, the one way that God wants to do that is through your giving. As a matter of fact, there's so many passages that says, if he, if you, this is the least, the least faith, if you... If you can't trust God in this least area of your life with something that you can see, which is money, how do you expect for him to trust you in the things that you can't see, like healing and joy and these other things? Make sense? Because your, your giving and how you handle your finances is directly connected to your spiritual component in life, Period. There's another passage in Proverbs 11 that says, there's one who scatters and it increases. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to hold on to this to increase. I'm like, no, you scatter, you'll increase. But if you hold on, you'll lead, it'll lead to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Love that passage. Another passage, it says Proverbs 22, he who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives his bread to the poor. Another one in Proverbs or Psalms 4, it says, Consider the poor. Blessed is the one who considers them. When you do that, when you become a life-giving individual, God will deliver you in a time of trouble. The Lord will preserve you. He'll keep you alive. He will be blessed on the earth, and you'll not be deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen you on your bed of illness, and the Lord will sustain you on your sick bed. These are just so many promises that we have in uh, Scripture regarding that. And so what he was doing, he said, Marcus, it's not about 10%. I own everything. That was the principle that I had to get through. He owns anything, everything. And when he says give, 
Honor him with that. Obey that. Just say yes. Trust him. And if you trust him, he will take care of you. So as we kept operating like that, um, he was enlarging our heart in the middle of those things. Greed was leaving. Covetousness was leaving. Now, here's the truth. My circumstances in life, they didn't change overnight. But the perception of who God was changed. And that's what needed to change. That's what needed to change. That's why I say, and you guys laugh all the time, I am God's favorite Mexican preacher, period. <laughs> why? I believe that. I believe not because I'm better. It's not because of my goodness. It's because of his goodness. <laughs> Amen? I mean, that's who he is. And you have to understand that the more you grow in your walk with God, the bigger God gets. The, yeah. God should get larger and larger yeah. in your life. That's why a lot of times if big things are happening in your life, you don't want to pray bold, strong prayers because you think God's smaller than that or he's not going to pay attention to that. In other words, you have grasshopper mentality. Well, I had grasshopper mentality, but now I have giant killer mentality. Like it doesn't matter how high, how big, how wide, it doesn't matter how ugly, whatever the situation is, even the situation I'm facing now, this will not move me. God is way bigger than this. Will it hurt? Absolutely. But he will heal the hurt. And I will rise above this place. And one day we'll be reunited. And who knows? She might be walking right now. A miracle's taking place. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is that God's faithful. He's a good God. All things are possible when you trust in him. So the key passage that all of a sudden I got at 2 Corinthians, it came, it came across. What time is it? Wow. Are you serious? Corinthians, it says, I say this, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. You, if you uh, sow bountifully, if you give a lot, you'll reap bountifully. Now, this is the beautiful one. This is where it just freed me up. It's like, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not of grudgingly or of necessity. You know, you had people manipulating. If you give today, I promise you, you will do this. And I was buying into that. I was like, wait a minute, I'm confused here. It didn't happen. But then this registered to me. It's like, Hey, as you purpose in your heart, give. So I began to get my check, a couple hundred bucks a week or whatever it was. Like, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to honor you today? The first is always yours, but what do you want me to do? Do I just do the 10? No, give it all or give half of it. And we would be in agreement. And sometimes Natalie would say, hey, I feel like we're supposed to do this. We had $40 again for groceries <laughs> in Bible school. And we met some Russian folks who were going back home to go minister in their country, and they needed some fine. They needed some money. We said, you know what? We're going to bless them with this 40. This is all we had. So she was in agreement. We gave. We didn't have any groceries at the house. Right, babe? We'd have, we were like down to <laughs> how many? Boiled eggs. <laughs> Ramon noodles, boiled eggs. I mean, if even that in Bible school. And so we sowed that seed knowing that we couldn't get groceries. I got three daughters. And a dog who's a prostitute. She's got like six babies. <laughs> I don't know why I say these things. And it's 12 o'clock. I'm going to shut that. <laughs> no. Wow, yeah, that's what I said. So I'm at home. We know we can't get groceries. We're down to our last meal. Not like our last, last meal, but there's nothing in the cupboards. Sweet A! She call you the general? General! What'd you call him? Willie. 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 Where is he from? New Yorker. He was from, he was a big old guy, six foot something guy. Well, Willie he used to play for the Pistons. He used to, he used to work at a, a church, and he was the caretaker and a janitor of the church, but he also was overseeing the cupboards, the, the food pantry. And they were wiping everything out in the food pantry. And that day, the same day we were so insane, that day, he had no clue that we were bare to zero. So he comes and he loads all of his truck in with groceries. And he goes, sweet A, hey, General, I got some food for you. God told me to bless you. I'm like, okay. So he's coming in bag after bag after bag. Our whole pantry's full. I'm like, what in the world just happened here? Well, we, were, we, we sow, we give. Not for that to happen, but that happens constantly. That's why two weeks somebody comes into this place. They barely know me. And they take me to my office and they say, Pastor Marcus, what are you going to do with that gathering place? 
goes, me and my dad are going to sow. We're going we're gonna to do a 60 by 60 slab, concrete slab. We're just going to give it to you. It's, our, it's a blessing to you. I'm like, what? Who are you, man? Stuff like that happens over and over and over again. We're about my father's business, and my father is about our business. I'm telling you, man, if you sell out to God, God will take care of you. Amen. And it's in that, in that context that that's the mindset of Natalie and I's heart. That's what this ministry, it was created upon. When God told us to start this ministry, I didn't have any money. Zero. But I knew I had to obey. I'm driving my little tractor. Like, Lord, I'm going to downsize I'm going to sell my house. We're going to do this. I'm going to obey you. And he's, I remember him speaking to me so clearly. He says, why are you going to downgrade? Believe me to upgrade. I turned that tractor around. I told Natalie, like, we're not selling this thing. God's going to take care of us. And I promise you, man, God is my witness. Natalie's a witness too. That whole month, that whole experience before we started this church, there was no income coming in. I've never asked the board or anyone here to give me any check. Never, never one time even to this day. But all of a sudden, people, God would put my name in people's hearts and they would come to my house and say, hey man, the Lord told me to give you this, 800 here, 400 here, 1,200 here. It was just like a raven was feeding us. And we were just obeying, here's the next step, here's the next step, here's the next step. Calling the Coliseum, hey, can we use your building, the biggest building in Seguin? He goes, can we use your building for a church service? He goes, well, well, like, when? Like, all the time, like, every Sunday. I'm like, what? We have to get back with you, Pastor. And God, we didn't have $500. It cost us $500 every week to do that. We didn't have $500. But all of a sudden, God would just continue to meet our needs over and over and over again. Amen. And he still does today. But here's what I'm telling you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his favor is not only upon me, it's his favor is upon you. And until you understand and get this in your head, that everything that goes into your bank week after week or bi week or however that pays, none of it is yours. It's all his. All he's saying, he goes, hey, take a portion of it. Honor me first. Honor me first. And you watch how the rest will be blessed. I'll prove it to you. He's not scared. You are. And so just open your hand, open your heart, and watch. I promise you, if you start giving and nothing happens, no increase happens, count up the money. I'll give it all back to you. I know God's faithful. I know his word is true. And here's the beautiful thing. The reason why I'm so confident, I'm like, man, I don't need. The reason why is because he wants to bless your family. He wants to see your kids. He wants your kids to see how you're putting him first, and all of a sudden, oh, man, what's going on here? My kids have seen so many miracles that they, they cannot not believe God is not real. Our city needs to see how God is blessing us so that they know, that, like, man, something's going on. I don't know where that revival is going on right now, but why not us? Why not here? Why not in this place? It's not Saigon. It's a place where God's heart dwells. God loves this city. And you're a part of it. And we're a part of this thing together. So we can honor him with the first fruits. We can honor him with everything that we have. You watch some amazing things happen in your life and in our community. Amen? Amen. And that's the, that's, that's the premise. of That's the foundation of why you see some of these things happening and why we are here where we are today. It's a just put on there Ephesians 4 and then I'll close. Uh, God's money is just a tool, that's all. Can you put that on there? Let the thief no longer steal. Whoa. Let the thief no longer steal. Paul got it. He goes, man, if you're withholding, you're just holding on to stuff for yourself, it's not good. As a matter of fact, in Malachi it says, don't rob me. Don't steal from me. But he says, if, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, do an honest work, with your own hands. Why? So that we can have something to share with anyone who has a need. Your money should not tell you what to, what to do every week. Your money should not be uh, mastering you. All of a sudden you get this check and it's already spent. 
It's mastering you. I will not allow money to master me. I will tell my money where it needs to go. Some of it comes right back here. Some of it goes to other countries. It doesn't matter. I'm open every single day. I am open, God. How can I be a blessing? Why? Because that's who he created me to be, a blessing. Amen? Amen. Did you get anything out of that? There's so much more. I got so much to say. But I'm sorry. Joel's going to have to take it next week. He's going to be talking about communication. But the elephant in the room about your finances, it needs to be discussed. Honor God. I want to encourage you. Oh, you know what? Do you have a take home? Can you put that on there? A take home? Here's what you need. Just snap a snapshot of that. When you think about God, is he El Shaddai or he El Cheapo? <laughs> Throughout the day, do you look for opportunities to give or are you just looking for manipulation and how you can get what you need? And based upon the answers that you give above, what's more important, the treasures in heaven or the treasures on this earth? The treasures in heaven are a whole lot more real, or they should be, than anything here on this earth. Amen? We are pilgrims. We are strangers and pilgrims just passing through to get to our home. The only reason why we are here on this earth is so that we can reflect the character and nature of God wherever we go. We do it well some weeks or some days. We do it poorly others. We have to match on the outside what's already on the inside. We don't live for victory. We live from victory. It's a mindset. It's a perception. It's a godly perception. It's a, it's a kingdom culture that you have to develop in your house. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we are so honored that we get to come together as a family and just talk about Jesus, talk about your loving kindness, talk about your goodness. Lord, I don't know how this lands on people, but I pray that you provoke us, even myself, Lord God, to even grow stronger in this area of my life. I know that you have all sufficiency in all things. You have an abundance for every good work, and you desire to use us to bring glory and honor to our families, to our home, to our city, to our country. And so we just trust you, Lord God, and let that land where it needs to land. Help us to honor you with everything that we have in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. God bless you guys. Hey, listen, remember you got all these exits and there's some fish out there for you to eat. God bless. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.